Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to what you may have missed. Today we're going to be taking a look at what else Warhammer Quest Silver Tower. Let's get right to it. Today we're going to be taking a look at gameplay. And what I'm going to be doing is, first off, I'm going to be describing how to do a demo. How to run through the most simplistic version of this game for people. Uh, this is for your friendly local game store manager, for any manager, uh, for you just doing a quick demo for your friends. Then I'm going to go through the blow by blow of how to play the actual game because how to play the actual game is fairly difficult. So, first off, what you're going to do is you are just going to move all of these to the side. Ignore all of it, right? All you're going to want is the colored dice. That's it and the wound counters. Don't worry about anything else. Right, what you're going to want to do is get your player to select their hero. Now, once they have selected the hero, if they do not select the Excelsior War Priest, you select the Excelsior War Priest. And your job is to heal them and take aggro. Make them feel heroic, right? If they select the Excelsior War Priest, one of the best things to take is just the Knight Quest or Very simple. Alright, the only time that you're not going to be doing this is if you've got four people that you're demoing for. Then you just highly recommend that one person plays the Excelsior War Priest. Alright, moving on. So what you do is you get them to pick up the card and read through it. Get them to hold it and get them to hold their dice. This way, they have a visceral connection to the game. Then you explain that there is three additional moves that they have. One is they can move by rolling one or more. They can discover a new area or explore an area which they have conquered by rolling a one or more. Don't worry about the exploring for this demo. Then they can recuperate from a wound by one, but if they have more than one injury, they can recuperate more than one to a maximum of three, but each time it increases the difficulty by one. So if recovering two ones, you're gonna need a one and a two. All right, simple. Next, you get them to roll the dice, get them to arrange them how they want them, right? They don't have to roll a one to do a war blade. They don't have to roll uh, specifically a six for their thunder strike charge. They just get to roll those dice and then choose their actions. That's how it works. All right, next up, these are the monsters you're gonna be working with. So you're gonna have a pink horror, unless that there's four people, then you're gonna have two pink horrors, right? Now, the pink horror is gonna have two actions. Ignore everyone's behavior charts, right? That's just gonna add a layer of complexity for you. So, what you do is, you have them move and attack. If they haven't moved, you have them just attack twice. For example, the horrors would use their melee attack and their area attack if they're in melee. If not, they'd use their area and their missile attack. Simple enough, right? So just one move, one action, all right, or two moves. Now, with the second encounter, you're gonna set up two Cadric Acolytes per person, right? And same deal, move, action, or stay still, one melee, one missile. Right, final guy, the Gaunt Summoner, when he comes out, if there is three or more players, summon a pink, you know, horror per turn. Otherwise, just get him to do all of his attacks in a turn. You know, have him move, do whatever. The big thing is, he is just meant to be their, their big bad, right? Don't worry about anything else. Right, so here is what you're gonna set aside the Wurgling Passage, and the Searing Beams. Before you may have just seen the monsters you're gonna to need to set aside for half a second. That's all you need to know. All right, 
After that, you set up these three tiles. The first tile is just the starting tile, which has a place for each of the players and the grip hound. All right. Next, when they discover the area, you go put it down and it's the Wurgling Passage, right? And you put a pink horror down and you know, you do the whole in an arcane library and whatever you want to do, build some atmosphere. Then once it's defeated, you go in these ancient tomes, you have discovered the chant in order to stop the ancient evils. Because in the final chamber, you'll see those green lines. They deal damage when the players walk across them, unless a player does the three plus chant action beforehand, right? And that'll turn them off for a turn. All right, so there's that little thing right there. That's all you need to know. When they defeat the Gaunt Summoner, that's it. That's how you run through it. All right, so that's how you do your little demo game. Next up, we have the actual game and uh, it takes quite a bit. So first up, what you're going to want to do is set up your Wheel of Fate. So you put one of those little eye counters at the top of it for each player, right? Then you put your skills on the left and your treasure on the right. Then you're going to get the event deck. From the event deck, you're going to separate two cards, the Wurgling Passage and the Library, right? Separate the Wurgling Passage and then grab two other cards, shuffle them up, put the Wurgling Passage on top of that, and then you're going to have another pile of three cards, right? Now, we'll get back to that in a minute. What you're going to do is you're going to tell the players to select their hero. Once again, get them to pick up the card, hold the dice. They get a visceral connection to it. Then, what you're going to do is, once they discover the first area, that's the Wurgling Passage, and you burn through that whole event area until you get to the next lot. And what you are looking for is you're looking for the encounter Searing Beams. And that's where they can find the Gaunt Summoner, right? Now, how they earn renown on that little wheel and get their skills is thus so. On each card, they'll have special ways of earning renown. But if they defeat an enemy, they just get renowned. So for example, say a player kills the pink horror, he gets to move it along one. If another player kills the blue horror, he moves it along one and so on. Right. Now, once they have defeated an area, they get to roll a D6 once they've done the explore action. So let's say everyone's defeated everything. The last player goes, all right, I'm going to explore. You only need a one plus. Excellent. After that, they get to roll a D4. On the roll of four or more, they get a treasure card, right? Now, once that discover explore has been done, then they roll a D6 again. This is for respite. Now, if that number is more than nine, which is the result of the D6, plus the number of treasure that each character has, they have another random encounter if it's more, if it's nine or more. Right, so once they've found the uh, Wurgling Passage, once they've uh, summoned the Gaunt Summoner, if they defeat the Gaunt Summoner, they get an Amulet of Hesh. A uh, Fragment, I should say. Now, depending on how many fragments they have, that's how many skills they may be able to keep. One, they get to keep one skill. Two to three, they get to keep two skills. Four to uh, seven, they get to keep three. 
And if they have all eight, they get to keep four skills. For each treasure, you roll a d6, and on the roll of four or more, you keep it. If not, discard it. Now, there is a fail state. If a player receives a fifth wound, they're removed from play. At the end of the encounter, they're brought back with four wounds if the other players have defeated all the monsters. But they get to keep their experience and treasure at the end of each thing because the whole idea is that Tzinch is tormenting them. All right, guys, you can see that it's relatively complicated, uh, but it is obviously much simpler each time through, and I do believe that is how it's designed. I've got a lot of thoughts on the game itself and the box set, but I am not going to be putting them up now. I'm going to be making a comment on another video, Final Thoughts. All right, guys, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you later.